Hello again, everybody. As you can see by the title, this is the long-awaited Flash animation, a basic animation tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you guys my process for making simple animations and stuff. All you'll need is some sort of tablet, a computer, and some version of Flash. It doesn't really matter which one. Now, you guys know me. I stick with Macromedia Flash 8 or Adobe Flash CS3. I think I've said CS4 in the past, but CS3 and 8, they, oh my god, they've been bay since like forever. Any version after that can eat a bag of baby deer. So, you want to learn how to animate. <laughs> You've fallen into my trap. I will rain frustration and tediousness down upon- Flash will do that by itself. Just as a forewarning, I have no idea why, <laughs> but these programs, sometimes they just crash for no reason. It's like, oh, you want to tween? <laughs> no, I quit. Oh, you just finished that character that took you like three hours to do? I-D-G-A-F, I quit. Yeah, it happens. So be sure to save all your stuff. I'm going to say that right now. <laughs> save every 10 minutes or something. Well, I do. <laughs> With that all being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So you open up the Flash program. As you can see, I'm using 8. For Flash 8 users to make a new canvas where it says create new, all you do is click Flash document and you're ready to go. For everyone else, like CS3 and up users, it'll give you an option, I believe, which is like, do you want to use Action Script 2 or Action Script 3? Stick with 2. I... I haven't even touched Action Script 3. And the first things that you should see are your tools, your timeline, your library, and some stuff at the bottom. I see a lot of people asking me, like, how do you get your lines so smooth? My lines suck. They're, <laughs> they're ew. Like, uh, uh. However, smoothing can help out a bit, especially with the brush tool. What you can do is go inside your properties, which can be found at the bottom of the page. You should see an arrow or a minimize or maximize dip button. They change it sometimes, I have no idea why. For me, it's an arrow. You click your brush tool, then go down to your properties, and you should see a little thing that says smoothing with some numbers next to it, and a drop down arrow, or something. The ideal setting for me would be between 40 and 60. I think I stay on the default, which is 50, but play around with it, see what works for you, that's just my recommendation. Mainly in your toolbox, you'll be using the selection tool, the free transform tool, the brush tool, or pen, pencil tool, your bucket tool, and the erase all. Now once you open up a new canvas, you'll see this big old white box just staring at you in the face, surrounded by 50 shades of gray, or one shade of, ugh. just like Photoshop and Paint Tool Sci, that white area is your canvas. Everything else is what won't be seen. However, unlike those programs, you can actually draw in the gray area. You know exactly where everything is. Isn't that cool? It's so awesome. It's Alright, it's not that cool, it's just something I just thought I'd point out. One more important thing to do before you start animating is to make sure that your canvas is exactly the way you want it to be. So let's say you want to animate in 1280 by 720 or something like that so you can get that 720p or 420 Go to modify and then document. Here is where you can change how big you want your canvas to be, the background color, and the frame rate. By the way, FPS means frames per second. I think. I'm not down with that slang, you whippersnappers. I stick with 20. It gives it a nice little even speed. And quite honestly, it actually makes it easier to lip sync. I right, don't ask why. Once you're done with all that, hit OK, and we are finally ready to go. Now remember, this is just basic animation. I'll get into the more detailed stuff later. But today I'm going to teach you about tweening and frame by frame animation, which is the best animation in my opinion. But, you know, at a later date, I'll get into more complex detailed stuff. But for today, just to get you started, here we go. Now to start off, I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, a little circle. Yeah, a little fun circle. I will name him Obama. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so alone. Let's name him Ted. What up, no Ted? Stop. I love bad b No, I don't. Do I? I don't remember. Cool, there you go. You got your drawing. Now bring your attention up to the timeline. Wait a minute, what's this? What is this? What is that? What is that? What is, what is that? What is that? This little guy right here is called a keyframe. Now let me explain frames for a split second. Today we're only going to be working with three types of frames. That would be a keyframe, a blank frame, and a tweening frame. What you can see right now is just one keyframe. But we're going to change that, aren't we? I hope. He does look a little lonely. Doesn't he? Doesn't he look lonely? Right above your timeline, you'll see this like 
ruler thing with numbers that increase by fives. Right below number five, you'll see a gray, not white, blank frame. So you should be stuck on one for now, and we're gonna get to five. To do that, right click that frame right under number five and insert keyframe. You can also go to insert, timeline, keyframe. There you have it. If you did it right, that one frame that you had before will stretch all the way to frame four, where on five, you'll see an entirely new frame. This is your second baby. Make sure you have that frame selected and then delete the drawing. No, seriously, get rid of it. Destroy it, get out of, get it out of here. Let it go. Legos, no! But I was so proud of it, why would I get rid of it? It's okay. And now I'm going to show you guys a little thing called onion skin. All right, so in your layers section, you see that little trash can in the bottom right hand side. Well, two icons to the right and you'll see something that's called onion skin. It's, you should see like two squares with one's blue and the other one behind it, it's like dotted or something. Well, go ahead and click that. <gasps> If you did it right, you should see a lighter version of the drawing you did before. See, it's not gone. It's not gone at all. It's just a Swayze ghost. Now, this is where it gets fun. Draw everything again, but slightly different. So let's say I want to make Ted poke something. With well, a poke something, that means he needs some sort of a hand thingy. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw him just slightly different. And here's the thing. I'm going to do that about four or five times. I guess he does need someone to poke though. So, uh... Meet Bob. My name is Robert Paulson. So that's basically it. Just redraw the same character over and over again, or just in sections like I do sometimes. Now, if you want your animation to go a little faster, you don't have to make it every five frames is a new frame. You can do every three frames or every two frames, or you can switch it up. So every five frames, and then after that, you can make it every two frames so that, you know, something happens like swiftly and quickly after something, you know, happens very slowly. Change it up, it's your dealio, it's your, it's your tune. You can do whatever you want, it's awesome. Now that you've gotten all the frames taken care of, it's time to color some stuff in. Select your bucket tool, and in the toolbox right under the magnifying glass, you'll see something that says colors. One is stroke color, which is for your pencil tool and stuff like that, and the other is fill color. You can click on that box and you can choose whatever color you want. Or you can choose your own color by clicking this little color wheel over here. And from here, you can pick whatever color that suits you, and click OK. Now, coloring in Flash is a lot different than coloring in Paint Tool Sire or Photoshop. Everything has to be on one layer. Otherwise, it just won't work. Another reason why it won't fill is because maybe one of your lines is disconnected from, you know, another line. And to Flash, that means you ain't done, dog. You need to close this gap. So for Ted, I'm going to make him red. And for Bob, I'm going to make him... Shut up. Be sure to turn off your onion skin at this point and go back to every frame and color it exactly the way you want it to be. Now let's see what you have so far. Go to control and click either test movie or test scene. It doesn't matter which one right now, I'll explain the difference between them in later videos. A small window will pop up and it'll show you what you just made. Just as long as it's in the canvas area. Now Bob seems a little annoyed right now with all the poking. So let's go ahead and educate him about the power of the dark side. What I mean by that is tweening. To make a new layer, you can go to insert, timeline, and layer, or you can click that folded piece of paper with the plus sign. But this time, once you're done drawing it, just go ahead and color it on the first frame. Just go for it and do it, go. Once you're done doing that, click the first frame, go up to insert, timeline, and create motion tween. The faster way of doing that is to right click the keyframe and create motion tween. Now go a little farther in the timeline and create another keyframe. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to about 30. Did you just see what happened? Did you see that dog? Did you see that? Unlike an untween frame, there's like this arrow pointing from the first frame to the next one. What's up with that? Now click the second frame and on your canvas, move the drawing to wherever you want. From here, you can move it, you can scale it, you can rotate it, you can even flip it if you want. You ever play Parappa the Rapper? You know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Click the first frame. Now you see that red rectangle in the timeline ruler area? Click it and drag it all the way down to the second frame. And as you do it, you will see your drawing transform or move or rotate or Parappa. And there you have it. Some simple frame by frame animation and some tweening action. I'll eventually make a tutorial about lip syncing and, and I'll also include the squiggly lines thing since you guys have been asking so much about that. And if you have any questions about animation, leave a comment or send me an email and I'll try to get to those as soon as possible. And I'm gonna leave the other questions 
personal questions for uh, the next animated answers, which I am slowly but surely working on. All right, I'm out of here. Done and done. I love you. I love you all. I love you. I love you and you and you.